Up until today, my cable modem and firewall have lived here on the floor in my office. It's finally time to remedy that. Today's video is brought to you by Lexar and the NM610 PCI Express NVMe Drive. Available in 250GB, 500GB, and 1TB capacities, it makes the perfect upgrade for your laptop or desktop PC. Featuring NVMe 1.3 Gen 3x4 and speeds up to 3.5 times faster than SATA, it's the surefire way to supercharge your PC. Get into your games faster with the Lexar NM610 NVMe Drive. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and today I am setting up the Unify UDM Pro in my server rack. For those not familiar with what the UDM Pro is, this is the Unify Dream Machine, and it's kind of a combination of three other products inside the Unify lineup. First off, there's the Unify USW8, which is an 8-port managed switch inside the Unify system and usually runs you about $100. There's the Unify USG Pro, which is their rack-mountable security gateway. However, unlike the USG Pro, which is only a 1 gigabit per second router, the UDM Pro is a 10 gigabit capable router. And finally, there's the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2, which is a Unify controller and a Unify Protect NVR all-in-one, and usually runs about $190. If you need all the functionality that those three devices provide, you'd usually be spending about $590. However, the UDM Pro is only $379, so if that fits your use case, this is actually a pretty good value right out of the gate. Walking around the UDM Pro, we can see the aforementioned 8-port gigabit switch. There's also a single 1 gigabit port for WAN connectivity, as well as a 10 gigabit SFP Plus port if you need 10 gigabit WAN connectivity. Port 11 on this switch is also a 10 gigabit SFP Plus port, and it is designed to be the downlink to other switches or devices in your network. On the far left of the UDM Pro is a 1 inch OLED touchscreen, and this is actually used for gaining very basic information about your network and devices connected to it. It can display things like your current internet throughput, the number of connected clients on your network, even things like your Wi Fi experience as provided by Unify Reporting if you're using Unify APs. Around the back is your standard PC power cable for both 110 and 220 volt, as well as an RPS connection if you wanted to provide this with redundant power using a Unify RPS controller. As best I can tell, the UDM Pro is really meant to be an all-in-one device solution for small and medium business edge deployments. That is, this is the single network controller that you need to deploy, and then you can expand this with the Unify SW24 or 48 if you need more gigabit connectivity. Think of this as a 10 gigabit router for a 1 gigabit client base. That is, all of your clients have 1 gigabit connectivity, however this is capable of routing up to 10 gigabits of WAN traffic. Also, if you needed to expand to potential 10 gigabit clients or even a 10 gigabit server rack, you could expand this with the Unify XG16, which is a 16 port 10 gigabit switch. So while this controller, firewall, and switch are all in one box, it is really meant to be used in conjunction with other boxes to expand your connectivity. Setting up the UDM Pro was very straightforward. However, it does require both an active internet connection and you're gonna to need to set up a Unify account. And some people are gonna see that as a negative right off the bat. But let me explain why it's actually to your benefit to do that. By default, cloud management is a part of the UDM Pro, just like it's a part of the Unify Cloud Key, and it allows you to manage this device remotely. So, if this were an all-in-one device that is meant for a small or medium business at a single site, and your IT staff is either contracted or in another location, this allows them, by default, to log in and manage the entire network at that remote site. So again, for its intended use case, I really do see that as a positive, as it allows me to manage my device remotely, even from my smartphone. So I give that a thumbs up. To get started, power it up by plugging in power to the rear of the device, connect an internet connection to one of the available WAN ports, and then connect a PC to one of the available WAN ports. After that, open up a web browser to setup.ui.com, and you'll walk through the very simple seven-step process. By default, the Unify controller will set up pretty much all of your firewall, routing, and network needs. It'll set you up with a basic 192.168.0/24, as well as your internet connectivity. After that, you are pretty much free to set up the device as you need. Set up all of your LAN and VLAN information, connect all of your Unified devices to the controller, and get your firewall and routing rules all in place. Now in the past, I have set up a number of Unify controllers from scratch, and if you're interested in seeing what that looks like, I will have links to those videos down in the video description below. It is exactly the same process. However, for today, I am simply going to migrate my existing configuration from my Unify controller onto the UDM Pro and get this thing up and rocking. So let's do that now. 
To back up your existing Unify controller, you're gonna to wanna to log into it, go down to the Settings tab, go over to Maintenance, and then click on Download Backup. From there, you're gonna take that backup file and upload it to your new Unify controller inside of the UDM Pro. So, log into the UDM Pro, go down to Settings, go down to Maintenance, and then Upload. Select your backup file, and then the UDM will install it and reboot. Now, in my network, I had both a Unify Security Gateway and a Unify Controller, both with different IP addresses. If you restore to a UDM Pro using a configuration like that, the UDM Pro will grab the IP address of your Unify Security Gateway, not of your existing Unify Controller. As those devices are now one and the same, you're simply gonna log into the old IP address of your Unify Security Gateway. And if you're not sure what that was, you can actually look it up in the settings menu on the OLED screen. Once I'm able to log into the UDM Pro and can verify all the settings are correct, it's time to decommission my old security gateway and Unify controller and get this thing installed into the rack. Now in this process, I'm also going to be moving my cable modem from its place of shame on my floor down into my server rack as well. And to do that, I've already done a little bit of work off camera. Yesterday, I ran a new coax line from the existing coax junction down to my server rack. And so now I'm ready to get everything installed. And that's pretty much gonna take care of that. Now I know this wasn't a full review of the UDM Pro, but I am planning on doing a full review of each of the different features inside of the Unify Dream Machine, including the network layout, as well as the Unify Protect system with the help of some Unify cameras here. And apparently Rambo's gonna help out too. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I also have a number of cool projects coming up on the channel here in the next couple of months, including a three server, $1,000 home lab starter kit. So make sure you don't miss that one. If you're interested in any of the products you saw on the channel today, make sure to follow the affiliate links down in the video description below. And on your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans or to see cute pics of cats. And if you like the content you see on the channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. Thank you all so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Wichita Brewing Company. It is the Shaven Yak 5%, I believe it's a brown ale. And hi there, Rambo. How are you? Hi there, buddy. You're gonna sit right, you can't have my beer. You can't. No. 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 Over here. It's nice and warm. I turned it on just for you. Yeah, there you go. Can you get on top so they can see it? Or are you gonna be a jerk? You're gonna be a jerk, huh? Yeah, English style brown ale. It's a very muted nose. If I had to say it smells like anything, it kind of smells like coffee, which is a little weird for a brown ale. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, it's still very, very cold, uh, but not offensive. Like I said, it tastes a lot like coffee too. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's a little bit malt forward, a little bit of coffee, pretty solid. Warmed up just a little bit. This still tastes a lot like coffee. In fact, it reminds me was that New Belgium, the, the cold brew cream ale? Um, gosh, I had that on the show probably about five or six months ago. This reminds me a lot of that. And for an English brown ale and a nitro cold brew cream ale, those couldn't be more different in their description. But this tastes a lot like that. Like, a lot like that. <laughs> That's weird. 
it's good, but it's weird. <laughs>